Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to Balance in Memory, where each week we focus on improving a different aspect of our balance and continue to exercise our mind and memory. My name is Eden and this week's focus is on walking balance drills, good training for our balance, for leg strength and mobility. These drills will also highlight the importance of good posture and can help build confidence. We will be doing these walking drills next to our chair, but if you feel more comfortable, you can move next to a wall. So when you're ready, grab a stable and sturdy chair, have a pen and paper handy, and meet me in the seated warm-up. Before we begin our seated warm-up, please remember to modify or skip anything that doesn't feel good, take breaks as needed, and follow your doctor's instructions. If you feel any unusual symptoms, stop immediately and seek medical care. Go at your own pace and do the best that you can for today. Let's start our seated warm-up by sitting towards the front edge of the chair, always sitting with that good posture, engaging through those core muscles to support the spine, draw the shoulders back and down over the hips, and pull the head back over the tailbone with the bottom of the chin parallel to the floor. And then keeping the engagement of those core muscles, let's start with our seated marches. Option one is to just lift the heels, so alternate the lifting of the heels. Option two, if you feel like you can go a little bit more comfortably, you can lift the feet completely off the floor. It doesn't have to be too high. You'll just start to warm up through the lower half of the body, the legs, the hip flexors. A few more times. All right, and then go ahead and set those feet down. Let's go into our shoulder circles. Draw the shoulders forward, up and back, moving in a range of motion that is suitable for your body. So remember, if you do have any discomforts or any injuries, please modify or even skip. Always want to make sure the joints are happy. Let's do one more time in this direction, and then let's change the direction of our shoulder circles. Draw them back, up and forward. It's kind of warming things up, stretching things out, making it feel good to the body. One last time and then relax those shoulders down. We're still engaging through the core. Start to slide one leg forward and lift the toes. You can keep the heel down onto the floor or you can lift it up if that's if you want a little bit more. And then let's point the toes away and lift and point and lift one last time. And now let's slowly circle that foot in one direction. Let's wake up those ankles, get a good warm up there. So important for our balance. Let's change the direction of the foot circle. Get any cracks out. And then let's go over to the other side. Slide the opposite leg forward. Either heel stays down or you can lift it up. We'll start with the toes lifted and then we'll point and lift, point, and lift one last time. And now let's slowly circle that foot in one direction, seeing how this side is doing, and then change the direction of your foot circle. And then place that foot back, still sitting up nice and tall. Let's extend the arms out, keep the shoulders down. The height of the arms is up to you. And let's start to make little circles with the arms. So if you do find that the shoulders uh, feel a little uncomfortable, you can draw the arms a little bit lower. And if the joints still aren't very happy, then feel free to skip. Let's change the direction of our arm circles, focusing the work on the muscles of the upper back, although you will feel it in the shoulders too. All right, and let's place the hands onto the thighs. Let's come into our spinal movements. Draw the shoulders back, press the chest forward, and then gently round through the spine. So just moving in a way that feels good. It should just feel like a comfortable stretch as we move forward and back one last time shoulders back chest forward and then go ahead and round let's return to that tall way of sitting let's move into our side bends fingertips on the shoulders and then let's side bend over to one side gently come back and over to the other side so it doesn't have to be too deep of a side bend getting some side to side movement but always always remember if you need to modify your back off or even skip. One last time on this side. 
Let's come back to center. Sit up tall. Let's first turn the head. So turn the head in one direction for a comfortable stretch for the neck. Try to keep that head over the tailbone so we're not drawing the head forward. Easy stretch for the neck. And then slowly draw the head through center and over to the other side. And you may notice that the head turns might not be exactly the same on the both sides of the neck. Let's draw the head back to center and let's move into more of a full spinal twist. So head, shoulders, and chest. Then relax the shoulders down. Bottom half of the body stays still. Easy twist through the spine, comfortable twist. And then slowly unwind and over to the other side. Head, shoulders, chest, looking to wherever is comfortable. Shoulders relaxed down, hands are just anywhere to assist you in the twist, to support you in the twist. Let's slowly draw ourselves back to center. Let's cross the arms over the chest, sit up tall, hinge forward at the hip, so maintain that strong flat back. And then let's press our way back up and lean it back, engage through those core muscles. So warming up the front and back of the core of the torso. Draw yourself forward any amount that is comfortable to you. Lean it back, maybe not touch the back of the chair, so engage through those frontal abdominals. One last time, hinge forward at the hips. Up and lean it back. And then let's come back to center. Let's extend those arms out. Height is up to you. Pull the shoulders down. Let's move, work through the side core. Shifting a little bit to one side. Try to keep those shoulders parallel to the floor. And then over to the other side. So really feel the work of the sideways as we move slowly from side to side. Keep your bottom steady and stable in the chair. So it's just the upper half of the body that is shifting. And then let's come back to center, hands onto the thighs, draw the chest forward, slow circle in one direction a couple of times, stretching out, feeling the lower back. Hands are there to support, change the direction of your circles. And then let's make our way back to center with that good posture. Let's come into our sit to stands. So separate the feet a little bit wider than the hips. Knees don't go past the toes. Option one, if you'd prefer to stay in your chair, hinge forward at the hips, press into the heels as if you're going to rise off of the chair, but just keep your bottom in the chair, feel the squeeze of those muscles, pause, and then come back. That is one repetition. If it is safe and comfortable for you to come all the way up to a standing position, make sure the knees don't go past the toes and they track towards the direction of the center of the toes. So we don't want the knees to come in. Same thing, hinge forward at the hip, strong in the core, press into the heels. So you're really engaging through those legs, rise on up, pause, and then slowly we'll hinge forward at the hips, draw your bottom back behind you. Knees don't go past the toes, reach for the chair if you need to, make sure the chair is there and then softly return to your chair. So up to you, up to five times or however many feel appropriate for your body. Remember, you can stay seated in the chair. You can come all the way up and down, or you can do a combination of the two, maybe a few up and downs, maybe a few just seated in the chair. So find what works best for your body today as we finish up this warm up. All right. All right. Our bodies are warmed. So now let's move to our focus for this week, which is our walking drills. These short walking drills can help strengthen our bodies while we work on improving our balance and mobility. They will highlight the importance of maintaining good posture and can even help build our confidence. You're welcome to keep a hand on the chair the whole time and remember to do only what is safe and comfortable. I'm going to give you the side view for these walking drills, and I do have the top edge of my chair right alongside my body, so this is where you can keep your hand on the chair the whole time. So let's start by standing up nice and tall with good posture. Remember to engage through the core muscles, the front, the sides, and the back. Draw the shoulders over the hips, pull the head back so it's over the tailbone, and bottom of the chin is parallel to the floor. Notice if you have a tendency to lift the tailbone up, see if you can melt the tailbone down so that we have a neutral position for our pelvis. And we'll maintain this upright posture the whole time while we do these walking drills. And if you do notice that you are getting tense, relax those shoulders down. Take some deep, comfortable breaths. 
the first walking drill we will do will be heel to toe walking. So I'm going to start as far away from the chair as I can, but where I can still maintain a finger or a hand onto the chair. So this is my support if I need it. So if you do feel like you're losing your balance, step out of the feet configuration or just place a hand down or keep a hand there. So do what is safe and comfortable for your body. You will still challenge your balance, even if you have a hand on the chair the whole time. So heel to toe walking as best as you can. And notice if you have a tendency to look down and drop the chin down, see if you can pull the head back, maintaining that good posture. And as I move forward a few steps, my hand is also gliding along the top of the chair and I'm only going to the point where I can still maintain contact with the chair. And now we're going to go backwards and moving very slowly and with control. Even just standing here, I can feel my ankles and my feet wiggling around. Maintain that soft bend in the knees and be very, very deliberate and intentional with placing the feet. So we don't want to step our own, on our own heels. We want to place the feet right back to where they were as we move backwards and going in a slow and controlled manner. Once again, just until you, until the point where you still maintain contact with the chair. Let's do that a few more times, walking forward and back heel to toe or as best as you can. So if you do need to have a little bit of space between the feet, feel free to do so. And then let's do that one more time. So heel to toe. If you're naturally out toed like I am, you may notice that the toes want to, want to point out to the side. So as best as you can, as long as it's comfortable, try to keep those toes pointing forward. So moving in a slow and controlled manner. All right. So our second stage will be a high knee walk. And we're not going to try to do the heel to toe with the high knee just yet. So natural stance, natural distance between the feet. And we're lifting the foot. And it's just like you're walking in slow motion. So it only it might only be three or four steps forward, just depending on the width of your chair, and then also back. So maintaining that good posture, breathing, find a comfortable and deep way of breathing. And anytime you lift the thigh, lift the toes as well. So we don't want to get into the practice of dragging the toes. So when we lift the thigh, we lift the toes as well. So we're flexing through the foot. So let's just do a few more times. Remember the slower you go, the more it'll challenge your balance. And that's what we want. So we don't want to rush. You can even imagine when you step backwards that you're stepping over something so that you can really clear your foot. Let's do one more time. And if you do feel more comfortable against a wall, you are welcome to do that as well. Remember to only do what is safe and comfortable for your body. All right. Stage three is to combine the two. So we'll do our high knee lift. Remember when we lift the knees, we lift the toes. And if you feel comfortable having the feet in a heel to toe position. So if you're slow motion marching on a tightrope, let's start. Find that good posture, shoulders back and down, head is in neutral position, engage through the core. And so we'll lift the knee as high as is comfortable up to the height of the hip, lift the toes. And then when you place the foot down, it's right in front of the other foot, plus or minus space if you need it. So this is the most challenging of the three stages. And remember to do what is comfortable for your body. So as we move slowly, not only working on our balance, but also developing some leg strength, especially when we move slowly. So we'll continue forward and back. So a few steps forward and then a few steps back. Trying to maintain a smooth and deep way of breathing. So we're not holding our breath. Let's do one more time. Our standing walking drills, or excuse me, our walking drills are important, just as important as our standing drills, which we will be doing a little bit later. So anytime you have some free time or you're walking down your hallway or you're walking against a wall, it's good to practice our 
our walking drills. All right, go ahead and shake it out. So we're going to repeat that set one more time. Oh, if and only if you feel comfortable, maybe you're just going to slide a finger along the chair or maybe you'll hover a hand over the chair. But if you do find that you're losing your balance, immediately place your hand down or even step out. We want to make sure we stay upright. If you prefer to leave a hand on the chair the whole time, you're welcome to do that as well. So standing with upright posture, maybe taking a nice deep breath. And then our first stage is our heel to toe. And so maybe you're just gliding a finger on the chair or maybe you're hovering the hand over the chair, but always making sure that your hand is within reach of the chair if you do find that you are a little shakier or that you might lose your balance. And remember to move slowly and deliberately also takes a lot of mental energy, a lot of concentration. So that's good for the brain. I'm going to finish this one as I move backwards. And you'll notice that anytime if your head comes out of position or if you start to hinge forward, that will throw off your balance. So importance of good posture. Ooh, okay, let's shake it out. So stage two is our high knee lifts without the heel toe configuration with the feet. So you can have your feet a little bit apart. And if you'd like to increase the challenge, maybe you're having your hand a little bit over the chair or using a fingernail. Your choice, find what is comfortable and safe for you. We just wanna feel those little wiggles, just similar to our standing balance drills. Oops, so high knee, remember to lift the knee as you lift the toes, almost like a slow march. And then on the way back as if you're stepping over something that is behind you. And also notice if, you have, if you're looking down a lot, the floor is there and you have nothing that is in the way. So let's try to maintain that good position with the head and with the upper half of the body. Let's do this last time. This is really good for developing strength in the hip flexors, in the core, in the legs, and also in the fronts of the ankles because when we lift the thighs, we lift the toes as well. All right, shake it out. And then our third stage is to combine the two. So our high knee lifts with the heel to toe stepping, standing up tall taking a good deep breath and then let's lift the thigh as high as is comfortable up to the height of the hip and place it right in front of the other foot. Remember the slower that you go, the more challenging it will be. So if you'd like to go even slower than the pace that I'm going, you're welcome to do so. And maybe you have a hand, your hand just hovering over the chair, or maybe you have it gliding along the chair the whole time. So find what works best for you, where you still stay upright and safe, but you just feel a little of those wiggles, especially in those ankles and the feet. All right, and then go ahead and shake it out. Whew. Okay, we have one more set to go through. You're welcome to go with the first stage with the hand completely on the chair. The second stage was when we maybe hovered the hand over the chair. And then this final stage will add a little bit of a head turn. So changing our visual field will affect our balance, will challenge our balance even more. So find what works best for you. If you are turning your head, maybe you'll just keep the hand on the chair the whole time. So let's start with that good posture. First is our heel to toe. So as we take a step forward, let's slowly turn the head just a little bit. Doesn't have to be too much all the way to the side, just a few degrees so you change your visual field. And then slowly, as you step the other foot forward, turning the head over to the other side. Moving very slowly. So kind of a side to side movement with the head. 
any amount that is comfortable to you. And then as we go backwards, same thing. This is if you're taking a slow, casual stroll and looking around. Although, I'm not sure if you would take a stroll with your feet heel to toe. Let's do one more time. Turning the head. And then going back. Whew, all right. Takes a lot of focus and concentration. You may have noticed that I am not talking as much because I need to focus as well. Our second stage is our high knee lift. So remember, you can hover the hand over the chair or keep it down the whole time. You can turn the head or keep the head still. Just make sure you're not looking down too much. So our high knee without the heel to toes so is look from side to side. This is really good for strengthening the legs. And then going back. And then let's do one more time forward. It's a comfortable stretch for the neck. And back. All right, and shake it out. And then our final stage, if you would like to do so, will be our high knee lifts with our heel to toe walk. Maybe with a head turn, maybe not. Maybe with the hand hovering, maybe the hands onto the chair the whole time. So find what works best for you. And slowly take a few steps forward. Make sure you are still within reach of the chair. And then a few steps back. Notice if there's any tension building in your shoulders. See if you can relax that down. All right, and then one time going back. Ooh. All right, everyone. Great job. Let's shake it out. So if it felt, if this is the first time you've ever done these types of walking drills, it might feel a little awkward. It might feel a little unbalanced, but the more that you do them, the more that you'll get used to them and the more that you can benefit your balance and the strength of your body. So let's go into our static balance drills. So now that we've done our walking drills, our static balance drills might seem a little easier or it might not, depending on how your body is feeling. Let's start with our feet as close together as is comfortable, standing up nice and tall. Remember that good posture, engaging through those core muscles, relaxing the arms down by the sides, but always feel free to keep a hand on the chair if you need it. And maybe just staying here, if you'd like to add a little bit more, like we did in those walking drills, we changed our visual field a little bit. All right, and then if you did turn your head in one direction, go ahead and turn it in the other direction. And then let's come back to center. All right, now let's go to our tandem stance, our heel to toe stance, similar to what we did with our walking drill. Soft bend in the knees, try to get those hips to point as forward as you can so there's not a lot of twisting happening, especially in the knees. If you do need to keep a space between the feet, you're always welcome to do so. Let's stand up tall. And maybe you have a hand onto the chair. Maybe your hand is hovering. Remember to do what is safe and comfortable for you in this moment today, every day might be a little bit different. And if you'd like to add that additional challenge of the head turn, you can. Trying to find a deep and smooth way of breathing. If you did turn your head slowly, draw it through center and over to the other side. I still feel some wiggles in my ankles and my ankles feel like they did some good exercise today. Let's draw the head back to center, hand down, shake it out. Let's move over to the other side, opposite foot forward. Good posture, standing up tall, engaging through those core muscles. Find your balance here first with the head still, and maybe you'll stay here, or 
If you'd like to add that head turn, you can turn the head in one direction, maybe keeping a finger or a fingernail or a hand onto the chair. Let's slowly turn the head through center over to the other side. All right. And then come back to center. Let's shake it out. Let's now stand predominantly on one leg. Soft bend in that knee. Let's lift the heel. Come onto the tippy toes. Maybe you're staying here working on the balance. Maybe you're lifting the foot completely off the floor. Find what works best for you. Remember, at any time, you can just place the toes of the foot down or place the hand down. Building lots of strength in that standing leg. The ankle, the feet. All right. Let's move over to the other side. Lift the opposite heel. Soft bend in that standing knee so that we're really engaging through those muscles. Maybe the toes stay down. Maybe the toes lift. Totally up to you. But you're definitely breathing, <laughs> trying to find a deep and soothing way of breathing. That'll help to calm the mind and also calm the body. All right. Let's place that down. I'm going to move the chair so it's right in front of me for our side-to-side -side balance. Separate the feet a little bit wider than the hips. And I'm going to try to keep those shoulders Nice and parallel to the floor as you shift the weight over to one side. Maybe the toes stay down. Maybe the foot lifts. Maybe you're engaging through that side leg to lift the leg. And then slowly soft bend in both knees, swing it over to the other side with whatever variation of the lifted leg you'd like to have. Now we're moving from side to side. Keeping that lift in the chest, the shoulders parallel, that nice long neck. And then last time on this side, Ooh. come back to center, move over to the side of the chair for our slow motion marches, very similar to our walking drills, but we won't be walking forward. So let's lift one thigh and you'll lift the toes. And then over to the other side, having that slight pause, working the strength of the legs as well as our balance. If you are comfortable and safe doing so, opposite arm to leg can lift. But if you need to keep a hand onto the chair, please keep a hand on the chair. Let's do one more time on each side. And really shake it out. Ooh, all right, great job, everyone. We did a lot of balance work today. So now let's carefully have a seat in our chair and get some good stretching. All our walking drills really help strengthen the body and work the legs. So let's get some good stretches. We'll start by turning to one side and we're sitting predominantly on the leg that is closest to the back of the chair, hand on the back of the chair for support, finding that good upright posture. And then let's slowly drop this front knee down any amount. Remember, keep our joints happy. So if your knee does not feel comfortable in this position, you can draw it up a little bit. And if it's still uncomfortable, feel free to skip. Toes can be curled under or top of the foot flat on the floor, your personal preference. And you'll start to feel a mild sensation, that's all we want, of a stretch on this thigh and hip flexor and allowing kind of the weight of the lower leg to get a nice stretch in this area. We're sitting up tall with that good posture. If you want a little bit more, you can add a little twist. So you'll turn the head and the shoulders, a little of the chest towards the back of the chair. You might feel a nice little release for that lower back, but just do what feels comfortable for your body as we take a few more rounds of breath here, allowing those muscles to elongate, allowing the body to start to slow down and relax. Let's slowly untwist and we'll use the strength of our arm to lift that front knee to meet the back. And then let's swivel over to the other side, sitting predominantly on the leg close to the back of the chair, arm on the back of the chair for support and slowly, Release that front knee down to a comfortable, mild sensation of a stretch where the knee joints and all of the joints are in a happy place. Sitting up tall, shoulders over the hips, engaging through the belly. If you feel like you can go deeper and it's safe for you to do so, you can start to draw that front foot a little bit back. Just make sure you're not overarching through the lower spine. So really engage through the core to keep the tailbone melting down 
And then if you'd like to add the twist, or if you added the twist on that first side, it's a tiny little twist to get some good stretches, stretching in the side waist. And taking a few more rounds of breath here. Remember, always just going to a point, especially in our stretching, that feels good. So if it doesn't feel good, back off, modify, or even skip. Let's slowly untwist first, then use your arm to assist that front knee to meet the back. Let's turn to face forward. Let's stretch the back of the legs, sitting towards the front edge of the chair, sitting up nice and tall. Let's start to straighten one leg forward. Heel stays down, toes lift, hands on the opposite leg. So you can have this main, you can maintain a soft bend in that straightened leg the whole time like I am. And then we'll hinge forward at the hips until you feel your mild sensation of a stretch. May not take a lot like me. So whatever amount you hinge forward where you find that nice sensation of stretching the back of the leg, that's where you'll be. Take a few rounds of breath here. It should feel like a nice release. All right, let's press our way back up. Let's switch over to the other side. Heel down, toes can lift gently, hands on the opposite thigh, sit up tall, then hinge forward until you feel your mild sensation of a stretch. Maintaining a soft bend in that straight leg. And also relaxing through the shoulders, relaxing through the face. And finding a few more deep and comforting rounds of breath here. All right, let's press our way up. Come back to that tall way of sitting. So for our hip stretch, we have two options. Op options. Option one will separate the feet a little bit wider than the hips. So if you have any concerns with your joints, stay with option one, where you will slide one foot forward and just relax forward so you get a nice stretch to the back, the lower back, the buttocks. Option two, only if it is okay and easy for your body to come in and hold the pose or hold the stretch, you can cross the ankle over the thigh above the knee, flex the foot, so knees up to the, toes up to the knee, and then maybe stay, stay upright or maybe you can round a little bit for it so you get a nice stretch for the lower back as well and then hands are on the thigh of the leg that is in contact with the floor so not on the floating knee just allow that knee to relax down as best as it can and then it's up to you how far forward you'd like to fold but have those hands there for support and take a few rounds of breath here When you're looking just for that mild sensation of a stretch on the outer hip, sometimes I like to feel those muscles that are getting stretched. All right, let's press our way up and let's move over to the other side. Remember the sides of the body are different. So option one might be the option for this side, or if the body feels good and it is easy to come into this stretch, then option two, crossing the ankle over the thigh, flexing to the foot, and round for it. So find what best works best for your body and take a few rounds of breath here. For this side, I'm going to go with option one, just to relax forward. Notice if the shoulders are coming up, relax them down and breathe here. All right, and then let's go ahead and release. Come to sit up tall, let's open up the chest. Nice stretch, cross one arm over the other. Reach for the shoulder blades, move the shoulders down. If you'd like, you can drop the chin down if that feels good to stretch out through the upper back and the neck. You'll feel the stretch through the shoulders as well. And then slowly release, open up. Opposite arm crosses on top, reach for the shoulder blades, relax shoulders down, maybe drop the chin down, only if that feels good on your body, if it feels comfortable and it is safe to do so. And then let's open it up, Ah, relax it down, hands can be onto the thighs. Coming into our side neck stretch, remember doing this only if it is safe for you to do so. Ah, so let's 
lean our head over to one side, relax those shoulders down, almost as if somebody is just very gently guiding your shoulders down. So feel the weight of the shoulders move towards the floor. So you get a nice stretch along the side of the neck. If you would like to drop to change or alter the position of the chin just a little bit to enhance the stretch, you can, but find what works best for you and what is safe for you. And then let's slowly upright over to the other side. You may notice that one side might be a little bit more open than the other. Then let's find a nice soothing, deep way of breathing that'll help to relax the body as well. Let's gently bring the head back up. Let's lean it back into our chair. So we're leaning our back into the back of the chair. Open up the arms. Get a nice stretch for the chest. Remember, find a depth of stretch that looks good, that feels good for your body. You'll feel a stretch of the chest, the shoulders. You can keep the head looking forward or looking up. And then when you're ready. All right, everyone. Great job today. We did a lot of work, a lot of drills for our balance. We did some stretching. So now let's rest the body and move to exercise our mind and memory. This challenge is called Know Your Syllables, helpful for memory, executive functioning, and composure. Follow the directions on each screen. A color bar timer will be at the bottom indicating how much time is remaining. Ready? Let's begin. In 45 seconds, write down three syllable words that start with the letter A. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down three syllable words that start with the letter S. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down three syllable words that start with the letter D.
time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down three syllable words that start with the letter M. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down three syllable words that start with the letter P. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down three syllable words that start with the letter U. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down three syllable words that start with the letter I. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down four syllable words that start with the letter P.
time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down four syllable words that start with the letter C. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down four syllable words that start with the letter R. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down four syllable words that start with the letter I. Time. Here are some answers. In 45 seconds, write down five syllable words. They can start with any letter. Time. Here are some answers. Great job! Come up with different answers each time you repeat the challenge.
We exercised our bodies, we exercised our minds. So now let's get a well-deserved rest through a mindful relaxation. We rest our bodies by sitting upright, but relaxed in our chair, the feet are flat on the floor, and we rest our minds by focusing or anchoring our mind on a single thing. That can be your breath or the sound of the wind chimes that I will be playing. When we anchor our mind on a single thing, we can reduce the chance of it wandering off. But if you do notice that your mind has wandered, bring it back to your anchor of either your breath or the sound of the wind chimes. We are not trying to block out any thoughts or emotions. We're just trying to focus our mind on our anchor as best as we can. Let's start by closing the eyes or having a soft gaze down towards the floor. And let's first bring our attention to our feet. So feel your feet resting on the floor. Feel your feet in your shoes if you have them on. Then feel your bottom and your back resting in the chair. Feel your shoulders and your jaw relax. Feel your face soften. And feel that space between your eyebrows begin to lengthen. And then bring your mind either to your breath or the sound of the wind chimes that I will be playing. And anytime your mind wanders away, recognize that your mind has wandered and bring it back to your breath or the wind chimes. As many times as this takes over the next three minutes. And slowly bring your mind back to feel your feet resting on the floor. Feel your bottom and your back resting in the chair. 
Then bring your mind to your breath. And think of something in your life that you are grateful for. And as you inhale, feel that gratitude come over your mind and body. And as you exhale, feel your body relax a little bit more. Take two more rounds of breath this way as you begin to deepen your breath. And then you can slowly wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, stretch the arms. And as you're ready, please open your eyes. All right, everyone. Good job today. Hope you feel rested and rejuvenated. Remember to repeat this video a few more times during the week to really work on our balance and strengthen our bodies. You can view the video at any time that is convenient to you online and a new video with different exercises will be available on Monday. So until then, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time.